Well, thanks, Leader Schumer. I wanted to start by outlining what I think are the reasons why we've got to get Build Back Better passed. And um, so, so much of this is about what happens to families. We've got to pass it for a whole host of reasons. At least uh, two or three are relevant, I think, or most relevant. One is Build Back Better will help families reduce their costs, whether it's the cost of um, child care, quality affordable child care, whether it's the cost of prescription drugs, whether it's the cost of um, home and community-based services, uh, not only for the cost to the family, but the lower, lower, lowering of the cost we can do for uh, the federal government. In the, in, the, in the context of home and community-based services, we have to decide whether we want to pay $90 for um, care in long-term care in an institution or whether you want to pay $26,000 uh, for care in the home. 90000 versus 26 is a big savings. But mostly what we're talking about here are those lower costs for families. Second reason to pass Build Back Better is to get people back to work, literally. We've heard over and over again about how difficult it is for people get, to get back to work if they don't have uh, a reliance on a quality affordable child care. Uh, obviously, COVID-19 plays a role in getting people back to work. We've got to make sure that we continue to, to combat the virus. That's why the, the rescue plan was so essential. But this, this uh, focus on getting people back to work is also relevant, again, in the context of home and community-based services. A lot of people are doing care or providing care for their, a family member. They, they literally can't get back to work because of that responsibility. It, it's an act of love that they've under, undertaken to help someone in their family. So whether it's lowering costs for families or your focus on getting people back to work, it's essential that we pass Build Back Better. The third reason, of course, is long-term investment in a high-skilled workforce. That's why pre-kindergarten education is essential. That's why Senator Warnock's efforts to uh, provide more Medicaid in states that don't have it for people that need to get ahead and have the benefit of health care is important. The long-term investment in children and families pays huge dividends uh, for our workforce. Finally, I'll say this. There, there's appropriately a lot of focus on the infrastructure bill and the benefits to communities. I know in Pencil Pennsylvania, for example, that bill is going to allow us to repair and replace a lot of bridges, just one example of probably hundreds. But for a lot of families, that bridge to work, getting back to work, isn't simply the physical bridge. It's a bridge uh, of caregiving. It's the bridge of getting the help that they need. And in most cases, you all know, it's her challenge. Her bridge to work is quality, affordable child care. Her bridge to work is often home care, making sure that not only is it available for her mom, but that the person providing that care isn't paid only $12 an hour, which is the case for most uh, home care workers, most of them being women of color. And finally, uh, her bridge to work might be care for a child with a disability, uh, or so many other challenges that she faces getting to work. So the good news is if we make this investment in lowering costs for families, uh, getting people back to work, and preparing the workforce for the future, that, in fact, becomes a bridge to that future. Senator Warnock.